Hey, this is Yossi. I run an investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And today I'm in uh, Freiburg, Germany. And so I thought it would be fitting to film a quick video on Vonovia, which is the biggest landlord in Germany and even in Europe as a whole, I believe. I think it's a very intriguing investment case because it's priced at a very steep discount to its net asset value. The latest share price is around 25 euros, but the company's net asset value per share is actually around 65. So that's a really large discount to its net asset value. It's around 60-65%. Uh, such discounts are very unusual for listed real estate companies unless they are going through some ma major difficulties. Um, this would imply that Vonovia perhaps owns low quality assets or that it's over leveraged or poorly managed but I'm going to show you shortly I don't think that this is the case here. But before we get into it could you please like my brother's video he's working hard to grow his channel thank you very much. And so Vonovia is today priced as if it was a low quality company but in reality it is what I would typically describe as a blue chip real estate investment firm. I say this because it owns a great portfolio, it has a strong balance sheet and it also has exceptionally good management. Let's start with the portfolio. So, so Vonovia as I mentioned earlier is the biggest landlord in Europe. It owns over half a million units, uh, mostly in Germany, but also some in, in Sweden and elsewhere. And these are mainly class B affordable uh, apartment communities in major markets. They generate very defensive cash flow. This is largely also because of how rents are regulated in Germany. The regulation lowers the rent growth during the good years, but it also all mitigate or even eliminates the downside during the tough years. Now, to give you an example, in 2008, 2009, rents actually kept on growing in Germany. And, and so e even today, despite the, the tough economic conditions that we are living through, uh, the rents of uh, the communities of Vonovia are rising steadily. The rent growth is expected to be around 3-4% in 2023. That's what it was also last year. And the rent growth is actually now even accelerating a bit because uh, we've had this period of high inflation and, and rents have not kept up with it, but they are slowly adjusting higher now uh, according to, to the regulations. Then secondly, Vonovia also has a pretty good balance sheet. Uh, there's this common misconception that it's uh, very heavily leveraged. And if you compare its leverage metrics to those of uh, some American uh, comparable companies like, I don't know, Avalon Bay Communities or Camden Property Trust, yes, then Vonovia is gonna seem over leveraged, but this would fail to account for the differences in their asset types. The cash flow of apartment communities in the US are far more volatile than those in, in Germany because of what I explained earlier. Uh, regulations are a lot uh, stronger in Germany and so the rent growth uh, is much more volatile. Uh, even during the tough years, typically rents are very stable, even growing in Germany. And so the German apartment community is in a sense a hybrid between um, a real estate investment and a bond. It's, you could perhaps uh, describe it as a treasure inflation protected treasury in the US. And so because they are so defensive, uh, they can afford to take on more leverage as well. And, and so the credit agencies take this into account when they assess Vonovia. And this explains why today it has a triple B plus investment grade rating with a positive outlook. Its uh, loan to value is right around 40, 40 to 45 percent. If I recall, it's 43. And its maturity is very well staggered. And this is really important today because interest rates are rising. Only around 10 to 15 percent of its debt is maturing each year. And Vonovia is able to address these debt maturities by paying them off with some retained cash flow or by also by selling assets. So it can also structure some JVs with other institutional investors to raise some equity at a relatively low cost and then pay off these maturities. Uh, its rents also growing, as I mentioned earlier, by three to four percent. And so, so this uh, provides a nice mitigation to the rising interest rates. Uh, Vonovia is not immune to them, but since on, it only has to deal with 10 to 15 percent of its debt maturing each year, the rest has fixed rate uh, interest rates. But then the, the rent hikes uh, uh, affect 100 percent of its assets. Uh, that provides a nice uh, hedge against the rising interest rates. And then thirdly, a blue chip needs to have a good management team, a strong track record, and 
This is also the case of Bonovia. So the company has grown its FFO per share by 13% per year since going public, has also grown its net asset value per share by even more than that, if I recall, 17 or 18% per year. So that's very significant. It's better performance than probably 95% of REITs and REIT-like entities that are publicly listed. It has also massively outperformed its, uh, its benchmarks in, in Germany, but also internationally. And it's been able to perform so well because Bonovia is very very well managed. Uh, it's, it's able to create more value than what you would expect by simply holding these assets and collecting a rental income. So how it creates additional value is by developing its own assets at higher yields than what these properties are worth. It's also able to consistently divide its properties into condominiums and then resell them individually with value uplifts of 30 to 50% in many cases. It's, it also has very significant economies of scale because it owns half a million units. It's also offering services to other investors because it's, it's able to leverage this large platform that it has to then provide property management services as, as an example to other investment firms and then it earns fees in the process and these fees then are shared with the shareholders of the company. So to recap here, we have a good portfolio, we have a balance sheet that's adequate to the to the assets that it owns and it also has a strong management team a great track record and and so this is not the 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 company to, that will typically be priced at such a steep discount to its net asset value so why is it so cheap i think that the market is pricing vonovia at such a low valuation because it fears that its net asset value is going to collapse in the coming years as cap rates expand to higher levels uh, the rationale here is that Cap rates compressed to historically low levels in Germany in the, in, the, in the previous years because interest rates were negative. And so cap rates today are around three to three and a half percent for such assets. But now that interest rate has surged, uh, long term interest rates in Germany have now surged from negative to right around two percent uh, over the past year. And so it expects cap rates also to rise materially closer to four or 5%. And in that scenario, obviously its, its assets would lose a lot of value and its net asset value would also then collapse from the currently high level of 65 euros per share closer to the 25 weight share price is currently at. But here are three reasons why I think that the net asset value of Vonovia is gonna be much more resilient than what the market is today pricing. The first reason is that its net asset value today already represents a steep discount relative to the fair market values of condos uh, that you see uh, being transacted in the market. As I mentioned earlier, Vonovia is able to divide its assets and sell them individually as condominiums. It, it has done this for many years. It does uh, billions of transactions every year. And typically the value uplift is around 40%. I'll put a chart on the screen so you, so you can see some of those past transactions that it has done. Today, it's, it's a reported net asset value of uh, 65 euros per share actually represents a discount to even the lower quality spectrum of condominiums in the market. It's reported NAV is also, I think, uh, two to three times uh, lower than than what uh, the, the new constructions go for in the market. And so you, you, it has, there is this steep discount to condo sales. Vonovia is able to consistently uh, resell properties once they are divided and it expects to do a lot more of these in the coming years. And so this should be accretive to its net asset value per share. And the second reason, its net asset value also represents a steep discount to the replacement cost of its properties. Typically it would cost two to three times more to rebuild its properties. and. I think this should provide additional downside protection because in Germany today, we need more apartments, not less. Uh, vacancy rates are historically low today already at around 2%. And the reason why we're in this situation is because rents are too low. And so the returns that are offered to real estate developers are, are simply not adequate for the risk. And, and so not enough is being built. I think that eventually either the government will have to ease up the, the rent regulation and allow rents to adjust higher for to get more construction ongoing or it will have to provide some other alternative forms of incentives to to landlords and property developers to make a new construction worthwhile but in, in any case it's hard for me to see its net asset value drop by a lot from here given that it's it all already represents only a fraction of the replacement cost of its properties and today we this, the replacement cost is not going any lower. We are going through times of high inflation. So, so it's going the other way. And then finally, the third reason, even today, despite the surge in interest rates, there's still 
a lot of demand for, for these assets uh, from various institutional investors in Germany. And this is because, yes, now you can get a 2% uh, interest rate on long-term bonds, but what you need to remember here is that inflation is also nearly 10% in, in Germany. So getting a 2% interest rate is nice. It's obviously better get, than getting a negative interest rate, but when you have 10% inflation, that ends up uh, getting you to a negative 8% uh, real return. And that's simply not sustainable for major institutions like insurance companies, uh, pension funds, and so on. You know, uh, an insurance company that has some long-term obligations, it's going to have to to find assets that provide inflation protected cash flow for the long run. And there is not much better than apartment communities for this purpose. And so even if the cap rates are low at the, let's say three and a half percent, they'll still prefer these investments in many cases because yes, returns will be low in the, in the near term, but at least your, 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 your assets are protected from inflation in the long run. And over time, then the, the cash flow also adjust higher, which will then allow them to take care of their long-term obligations. But with all this said, I'm not saying that net asset value isn't going to drop at all. I think it's uh, very possible that net asset value drops a bit from here, but as I mentioned earlier, today the share price is 25 euros, the net asset value is closer to 65 euros, and so there is very significant margin of safety between the two. Even if we now assume that the net asset value drops to 50 euros, you still have you know, a good amount of buffer there. Just to get back to 50 euros, uh, the share price of Vonovia would need to double from here. And so the next question is, what will be the catalysts? I think that there are two major catalysts for Vonovia share price to recover. The first one would be if it announces some significant asset sales uh, in the coming quarters. This would allow it to then address its maturities of 2023 and 2024. It would also prove to the market that it's still able to transact its properties at, at valuations that are far superior than what's currently priced uh, in, in the stock market. And so I think that, again, if it could announce some major property sales in the near term, this could lead to a rapid recovery in its share price. And then the second catalyst would be if interest rates now return to lower levels. This would obviously be very positive for the stock because it seems to have crashed in the first place because interest rates showed up. And so the market began to fear that its net asset value is going to drop. But, but if now we see a reverse in interest rates and they return to the lower levels where they were in 2020, 2021, then you would expect its uh, share price to rapidly recover. And I think that's actually quite likely that we will see interest rates return to lower levels in the coming years because they rose because inflation showed up to historically high levels. Inflation went to nearly 10% in Germany as a result of the pandemic, uh, supply chain issues, the stimulus provided by the government. And, and then what made things even worse was the, the war in Ukraine. But now as we slowly get the inflation back under control, there are alway, already some pieces of information that seem to signal that inflation is getting back under control. I think that interest rates are also going to to return closer to where they were previously. And this should significantly help the, the sentiment of the stock. And so the timing of all of this is obviously very uncertain, uh, but I think it's likely that we see some major asset sales already this year. And then perhaps maybe next year or the year after, we'll see also interest rates decline. And with that, I think we're gonna see uh, a rapid recovery in Vonovia's uh, share price closer to its net asset value. As I mentioned earlier, just to get back to 50 euros, which would be a more conservative estimate of its net asset value, the share price would need to rise by around 100%. While you wait, you also earn a 6.5% dividend yield, which I think is sustainable. The, the company seems to be willing to, to maintain it, although I think that they should probably eliminate it altogether and focus on deleveraging and buying back shares instead. This would probably create even more value for long-term shareholders. In any case, I think, uh, look, the bottom line here is that you get a blue chip company that's priced at a steep discount to its net asset value because of temporary issues that I think will uh, over time disappear as the company pays off some debt, interest rates return to lower levels. And, and so the risk to reward is very compelling here. The insiders of the company appear to agree. Uh, the CEO, the CFO and some other executives have bought a lot of shares over the past year. And, and so this is why Vonovia is one of our largest international holdings today at uh, Leonberg Capital. We think that the market has simply overreacted to, to the surge in interest rates. 
not realizing that German apartment communities are a lot more defensive than uh, elsewhere in the world because of the how they are regulated. And so, yes, it may seem that it's over leveraged based on traditional um, leverage metrics like uh, debt to EBITDA. If you if you compare that of Vonovia to those of American REITs, it's going to seem highly over leveraged. But this really isn't the case once you take into account the differences in their assets. That's all I had on this topic. Thank you very much to all of you who watched till the end of this video. If you could please like and subscribe, it will help me a lot. Thank you very much and see you soon.